Hello, my name is Molly Holt, and I am the gallery director at Meredith College. I'm a Meredith alumna, and I graduated with the class of 2016. Thank you for joining our virtual tour of Spiritual Awakening, Native Roots, and Culture. This exhibition features the Mercy Kessler lecturer and visiting artist, Alyssa Kinson, whose exhibition in Weems Gallery will be open to the public until October 19th. The Mercy Kessler Lecture Series invites scholars in the areas of visual arts, architecture, and religion to Meredith to speak in their respective fields. Alyssa's lecture, entitled Visions, Processes, and Native American Cultural Awakening, aired on September 24th. It featured the musical performance by Charlie and the Sunshine. This link is forthcoming on our website, Meredith on this tour, I will be accompanied by one of four gallery interns this semester, Kristen Oldman, who is a senior majoring in interior design. Throughout this tour, you will be presented with six works of art, along with an insight into who Alyssa is as an artist, as well as her unique approach to art. Mixed media artist Alyssa Hinton refers to her body of work as the art of transformation because it is a process of the reawakening of our Southeastern Native American culture. Now, what do I mean by mixed media artist? A mixed media artist is one that practices art using more than one medium or material. On this tour, you will be presented with various works of art that are two dimensional ranging from photo collages, digital renderings, fiber applique, quilting, as well as three-dimensional assembler if it's ever hung on the wall. Alyssa's work is a provocative portrayal of both folklore and history surrounding her native roots, as well as a combination of her own perspective on the visions and dreams that come to her. This exhibition combines two themes, earth awareness, and cultural revelation. Through her artwork, Alyssa attempts to untangle a complicated web of events pertaining to the displacement of her Tuscarora and Osage ancestors. Tuscarora being from Eastern North Carolina and Osage being from the Missouri and Kansas areas. Originally from Pennsylvania, Alyssa relocated to North Carolina in the 1990s to be on location and dive further into the history and culture surrounding her ancestors. Alyssa's grandfather left her a deed to a plantation in Johnston County, North Carolina. Within this deed were slave rolls that contained the names of family members. Propelling the realization that Alyssa's Tuscarora ancestors were in fact slaves that cultivated the very same land. This realization propelled Alyssa and led her to create work that highlighted and explored the indigenous culture that was once hidden from her all the while exploring her own definition of the human connection to Earth. This brings us to the first work of art on our tour, the Mangalore Collage, which is a mixed media photo collage. Mangalore is based off of Lisa's experience searching Johnston County, North Carolina for the tobacco plantation where her Indian ancestors were slaves. She began to bridge a clear connection to her past after she spent time on the land itself and connected with long-lost relatives such as Toya Beck, a Native American singer-songwriter who happened to be her long-lost cousin. The inner workings of Southern plantations are learned today in history classes. However, despite this education, Little to no recognition is made to Native American slaves' roles in cultivating the land. While African American slaves cultivated rice, indigenous people cultivated tobacco. Mom's word collage and memory benefits to its play are both inspired by questions and experiences Alyssa had in relation to her cultural heritage and personal growth. The collage on the left is created from up to 40 pieces of layered fragments of photographic cutouts, sound imagery, and drawings. The tobacco drawings 
as the blonde before them, was adapted to represent a bond found in North Carolina. Silhouettes appear at various levels of relief, perhaps representing her ancestors that were present outside history. An earlier version of this digital collage is the central design in the Limerick Club to the left. These two works, along with others in the exhibition, bring to the forefront Alyssa's attempt to make her audience aware of the aspects of indigenous culture that are hidden from the present day. In her lecture, Alyssa refers to herself as a spiritually guided artist, and her works reflect the same idea. Many elements of her art, derived from visions and dreams, are paired with the research of Native American ideologies and practices. Another level of her artwork is added with her understanding of the universe and the human relationship to it, which propels forward the idea of climate change and the philosophy that humans have a necessity to change in order to protect their species on Earth. Keeping the two themes in mind mentioned earlier, cultural, revelation and earth consciousness, we move on to the next work of art in our tour, the Southeastern River Dream, which is part of the Awakening series that extends back to 2001 and continues to present day. This series has been like a vehicle for Alyssa to reconnect with her ancestors, while inspiring her to communicate a message of transformation and rebirth through her affirmation of earth consciousness and the coming together of the human race. This is a mixed media composite print, as can be called a collage. And it involves the piecing together of photographic elements that include hand rendered art and digital editing to create the print before you. Alyssa spends time piecing together and layering picture fragments that she then re repositions in Photoshop, which allows her to explore the design. Symbolic of Alyssa's grandfather's people, the Chattanooga Band Tuscarora, who were river people of eastern North Carolina. This piece is meant to represent a type of mask prototype. On the forehead of the face before you is the traditional four daughters medicine wheel. Four daughters relating to the circle of life, self-awareness, and knowledge, and the medicine wheel, which can be broken into four quadrants, representing the four pillars of people on earth. The medicine wheel's significance varies according to the nation you talk about. In this case, it serves as the third eye of the ancestor. It represents Alyssa's grandfather's insight and compassion he shared for his people and their traditions. Woven throughout the print is the Neese River, referring to the movement of people and the fact that Indians settled next to rivers because it was a source for their everyday life. This print addresses the cultural reawakening mentioned previously, along with the human's relationship or kinship to nature. Hi, my name is Kristen, and next in our tour, I will be speaking about the indigenous earth altar. This walk around installation includes five pieces. There are four of what Alyssa calls power dresses and one central medicine wheel. The medium she used for the pieces you see before you is fiber applique. Fiber applique is ornamental needlework in which pieces or patches of fabric in different shapes and patterns are sewn or stuck together onto a larger piece to form a picture or pattern. The earth altar is inspired by American Indian signs and traditional hide drums. The overarching themes of this piece relates to the unity and interdependence between humans and the universe. The combination of the central wheel and the surrounding corresponding dresses creates an altar of connectivity, celebrating the indigenous philosophy, we are all related. 
All these separate parts, while they contain their own attributes, intermingle with each other through relationships of duality. Next, I will be focusing on the medicine wheel. The medicine wheel is divided into four quadrants, yellow, black, red, and white. The quadrants represent the four divisions, the cardinal directions, the seasons, the times of day, and the four elements. The center of the medicine wheel represents elements of the physical body, emotional heart, the spirit, and the mind. When all four of those elements are integrated into our lives, it can produce personal success and wellness. The black and the yellow symbolizes day and night. Perpendicular to the black and yellow are the colors red and white, which symbolizes the masculine and the feminine. Alyssa created organic abstractions with each section that directly correspond to the dresses. The yellow section is pointing east. It represents spring. The pattern on the yellow are deal deer trails. The red section is pointing south. It represents summer, full daylight sun, and the heart and the water element, which is represented by the deep ocean currents. The black is pointing towards the west. It represents fall, the sunset, and the spirit and water element. The pattern on the black represents the night sky that backs the features of a panther. The white is facing north. White symbolizes winter, the dead of night, and the mind and fire elements as depicted by the flame like pattern moving upward. Each section has a small amount of color from the other to illustrate the interconnectedness of the universe. Each quadrant relates to a power dress hanging in its corresponding cardinal direction. Each dress contains a totem like animal that are common in indigenous creation stories and ceremonial practices in. North, Central, and South America. I represented here the turtle, the panther, the eagle, and the deer. Personally, North American hide dresses were essentially wearable medicine wheels. Traditional hide garments are said to carry the physical, emotional, spiritual, and mental power of the wearer. Specifically today, I will be talking about the Thunderbird power dress. The broad wings extend outwards from the flames of the fire element, and the lightning bolt beams from the eye. The dress references the original creation story of the universe through thunder and lightning. The Thunderbird is the quintessential Native American icon. It represents the concept of destruction and rebirth. Elisa is representing electricity in a modern way through the use of circuitry imagery and copper, a great conductor of electricity. This power dress correlates to the northern quadrant of the wheel. Old age and wisdom are associated with winter and are depicted by falcons, hawks, and eagles. Through the process of creating this installation, Alyssa learned more about her heritage and became closer to her spiritual self. She gained a deeper understanding of the interconnectedness of the universe and the we are all related indigenous philosophy. Next in the tour, we will be focusing on the Dear Messenger 1. Dear Messenger 1 is a mixed media composite print that is a part of the Awakening series. The deer is a universally sacred being to Indian people. The sick provides newness as well as new knowledge. The Deer Messenger series presents the deer as a magical, somewhat mystical creature. The deer figure represents the idea of transportation between the parallel worlds of the earth and the sky, between the spirit realm and our familiar world of reality. The deer also has historical significance. The deer skin was used in Native American trade. From the Tuscarora of Eastern North Carolina, the deer clan is at the top of the clan totem system. Venus, the morning star, is also referred to as the deer star. In this piece, focused before you, the morning star is substituted for the eyes to show the parallel cosmic world. The double helix on the forehead represents the duality of opposites. 
The good mind versus the bad mind, twin forces that continually fight one another. This is the first of 10 deer messengers. Each portrays the deer as the central focal point, but the deer is not tied. Next on our tour is Dino Evil Resurrection of Chief Big Spud, which is part of the Awakening series and is a mixed media composite print similar to the one seen before. Rising from the turtle's back is the famous photograph of Lakota Chief Bigfoot in death at Wounded Knee, which signifies the defeat and the subsequent resurrection of the last three Indian nations. The upper third of the print includes the Sky Dome, which is the realm of spirits. Underneath the Sky Dome, all life forms are equal. The seven stars descending into the middle of the print represent the past seven generations of ancestors. The lightning bolt connecting the sky to the earth are thunder beams who assisted in the creation of the universe. The lower half of the composition is dominated by a turtle serving as a symbol of the land. The turtle is a female icon correlating to a water element, which is related to birth and regeneration. And as you know, a turtle is an amphibian, which bridges the gap between water and land. The turtle is also central to the foundation in the Iroquois Sky Women creation story. According to the creation story, Sky Women fell through a hole in the atmosphere and landed on the turtle's back, which through human and animal cooperation became the earthly land that supports all life. The turtle, playing a central role in this creation story, then becomes one of the oldest creatures from the Earth's remote past. Nothing escapes the turtle's vision and it has a protective eye that keeps its mind pure and sees no evil. Their survival is integral to our own. Alyssa's composition relates to the imminent regeneration of the American Indians seven generations after the 1890 Wounded Knee Massacre carried out by the U.S. 7th Cavalry during the military campaign in Dakota. This massacre killed approximately 300 people, predominantly women and children. Also included in this piece is the blue flame of purpose, which symbolizes the well-being of humankind, and the tree of peace, which relates to the symbol of peace in Iroquois tradition and the diplomacy between the Iroquois and the Westerners. The theme of the turtle symbolizes the price being paid for the destructiveness of humankind and the choices made with the disregard for the future of this planet. Turtles call us to remember the importance of all life forms on Earth and warn them of the disappearance of the plant and animal species. This piece relates to the two themes, once again, that are predominantly throughout this exhibition, cultural revelation as well as Earth consciousness. This mixed media assemblage is entitled Underwater Panther and is a part of the Ancestral Spaceship series. The Ancestral Spaceship series has 13 total works. The Eagle and the Condor is the final work in the Ancestral Spaceship series and was featured in Alyssa's lecture. As I mentioned, this is a mixed media assemblage. It is a 3D twist on a 2D composite print work, like the pieces we have shown you earlier. Similar to 2D composite print work, there's a layering of patterns, human animal, philosophical, metaphysical content, and historical references to relate a story. She constructs her assemblages from found wood and then layers the surfaces with collage relief, which is hand rendered art that has been digitally manipulated. For the assemblage stage, wood is arranged then attached together with glue. From there, computer printed or hand rendered cutouts are then applied to the wooden form. This very slow process results in a coherent whole, like the spaceship you see here. The backs of the frames are then painted white and red to express dualities, for, uh, good versus bad, for example. The forms expressed in this series expands on previous subjects mentioned such as the Iroquois creation story with Sino Eagle and the ceremonial 
season cycles touched upon with the Bettison wheel installation. Each construction with the spaceship series represents a different traditional totem-like icon that is common in creation stories and ceremonial practices across the Americas. The panther serves as a connection to the ancestors residing in the spirit underworld. This is Ellis's interpretation of the mythological water being known as the underwater panther, who is a direct ancestral icon found etched onto Osage shell gorgets from Missouri burial mounds. Gorgets are pendants that are worn around the neck. The panther is shown peering through water reeds as it surfaces from the depths of the underworld. The bright green eyes give an extra layer to the otherworldliness of the panther. Thank you for joining our virtual tour of Spiritual Awakening Native Roots and Culture that features the artist Alyssa Hinton. Hopefully you've enjoyed the six pieces of art that we chose on the tour and you know a little bit more about the artist and her unique approach to art. This exhibition will be open to the public until October 19th. The gallery hours are from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. on weekdays and 2 to 5 p.m. on weekends. Following this tour, we will be available to answer any questions that you may have. Thanks again.